to another episode of the Healthy with Heartland podcast. My name is Justin. You are also joined today by your favorite creative directors, Simon and Shannon. And we also have a very special guest, Heartland's own senior health and wellness consultant, Matt Wesp. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome. Excited to have you. We're going to have some fun today. We got a great topic for you. Things that the grocery store is doing to you. Yes, they're doing things to you. We're going to talk about that. <laughs> but before we get into the topic, let's get over to some announcements with Simon and Shannon. Awesome. Welcome back, Heartland family. If you're not already, make sure you're following us on Facebook. Make sure you check us out on YouTube. We post all of our podcast recaps on there, as well our Instagram channel. We have awesome food photos. Uh, we mention it every week. If you are not a part of the Heartland Foodies group, we'd love to know what is for dinner tonight. So make sure to check that out. Um, become a member so that you can see all things Heartland. Uh, we also have a giveaway this month, so May 28th, we will be drawing a winner for our Pitmaster giveaway, so make sure to submit a recipe for that. And if you're a Heartland customer, a couple days left, you can take advantage of our Cobia special, so four Cobia fillets with your May reorder, absolutely free. Definitely Cobia. check that out. And if you're interested in hosting an event, a spring or summer pop-up, or a virtual Facebook event, just definitely check us out on Kat and Lindsay's Facebook page, send us a message, and we'd love to get you set up with that. And with that... Let's get into the podcast. Let's do it. All right. This is going to be fun. So I believe you have a list yes. that we're going to work through here yes. on right. different things, marketing to look out for, trends, grocery store. Let's get into it. All right. So the first one, hot, fresh fibs for sale. Mm. So basically what they're doing is essentially you're going up to the grocery store. You're thinking you're buying something fresh, like a fresh muffin, breakfast, something like that. Um, and it's not so fresh. Mm. Fresh baked goods, not so fresh. That's right. That's right. So uh, they arrive raw, and then they bake them and package them. So it's not even something they're really making. You're thinking that, you know, like there's this, um, you know, Beauty and the Beast Mad Hatter behind the, uh, <laughs> you know, baking your, your cake or your muffins or whatever you're getting, and you're not getting any of that. It's totally uh, just marketing and, and uh, you know, it's not what it seems. Wow. And that upsets me. <laughs> Not that I eat those kind of things, but that upsets me. You think that, you know, there's this nice jolly old baker in the back and you're getting something fresh. It's not fresh at all. Right. That's just like all the restaurants. Yep. I it's mean, most of them are thawing out desserts and yeah. serving it. Yeah. Yep. Right. Unless they have like a, a pastry chef there, which honestly these days is not so common. So, right. yeah, frozen desserts, thaw them out. And I mean, those cheesecakes and pies, they taste pretty good at the restaurant. So um, I believe it. <laughs> cakes, I feel like, you know, one of those things, that, like if they're frozen and you defrost, I feel like that's normal. Like that's probably pretty good. Mm. But the muffins, <laughs> the fresh muffins, muffins. What about like the French bread? Like that's everyone's I mean. going there on a daily yeah. basis to get that kind of thing. I don't know. I'd be disappointed. I, I mean, I am disappointed. <laughs> By the way, since if you guys are joining us now at 12, it is lunch. Grab a bite to eat. We hope you're enjoying everything. Like, comment, share, uh, and also comment below. Let us know um, how you're feeling about these things that we're talking about. Do we have a giveaway today? We can do a giveaway today. We might as well do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Since it's girl season and we are going to be giving away the Pitmaster giveaway next Friday, I believe. Yes. Um, let's do a Rufus Teague barbecue sauce blend as well as the dry rub spice. So we'll send someone that awesome uh, grill package. You can get cooking with some nice stuff using those, uh, those good ingredients. So we'll definitely get that out to someone. We'll do that at the end of the episode. Matt, do you enjoy grilling? Anything like that? I uh, don't have a lot of experience with the grill. That's unfortunate. I've done it a few times, mm -hmm. um, actually, with new customers, cooking on their grill instead of in their kitchen, what we typically do on, uh, on you know, like when we're introducing our service to new customers. But mm -hmm. um, that's always worked out well. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, if I was able to really get into a grill, I'd have a really good experience with it and have good results. But uh, where I live in my apartment, uh, I can't, you know, I don't have the access to the grill. Okay. Gotcha. What's your... Uh, go-to cooking methods of choice? Well, when it comes to beef, I'm always doing stovetop. Uh, stainless steel pans is my typical go-to. I try and, uh, Zach turned me on to dry brining. So oh, yeah. Same. when I have the opportunity to do that, I, I definitely uh, take advantage of that. When it comes to fish, I'm typically baking. Mm. Uh, just so much easier. It's quick. Uh, salmon, cobia, Mm. flounder all of them it just works so much better yeah. uh really retains the moisture mm -hmm. uh, and then chicken it could go either way uh thighs i typically do stovetop but breasts i would prefer to do baking as well same but you know it all depends yeah. yeah we've gotten into the 
the baking just because of the time it's saving us. Like you just do a bunch of things as, as far as like when we're meal prepping or something like that. Yep. We've just been throwing them. Now, it doesn't give that aesthetic pleasure that you get from eating things. But I mean, you know. In terms of like what, like the grill marks and things like that? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it doesn't look as pretty, but I, I enjoy using bake like a baking tray and doing like a bunch of chicken breasts, a bunch of pork chops, things like that all at one time. Yeah. One, one thing I will talk about experimenting with these things is I always like trying different preparation methods when it comes to chicken. So typically we would use like olive oil or coconut oil or something like that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if I have, if I've just had bacon and cause I don't eat like normal meal foods, mm -hmm. meaning like breakfast is breakfast. Like I'll eat chicken at nine 30 in the morning. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't care what time of day it is. <laughs> right. So if I'll do bacon and then I'll cook the chicken in like, you know, in the bacon or pumpkin seeds, Mm -hmm. in the bacon like just mixing different things is is what i've really come to enjoy about trying and experimenting in the kitchen okay blending the flavors yeah and, and you, you talk about like not doing you know like traditional breakfast at that certain time is there a reason um now i don't want to paint the picture that i don't enjoy breakfast foods <laughs> <laughs> i love breakfast foods i eat eggs very much every day mm -hmm. but when it comes to like putting constraints around what a meal has to be, mm -hmm. I don't follow that. Okay. Um, sometimes, you know, it's just the time of day, intermittent fasting, not while I'm consciously doing it, but I tend to eat later or, you know, my first meal is between 10 and 12. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever I have. So I also tend to meal prep a good bit. Okay. So if I have something that I cooked yesterday, and depending on what my schedule looks like for that day, I'm going to either eat that first based on what I'm currently doing, or if I have time to prepare something, I might prepare something. Okay. Hmm. That's a good way to think about it. That way you're not, like, boxing yourself into a specific, you know what I mean, food group at a specific time. Right. Interesting. Absolutely. I do that a lot, too. Always have a certain amount of food meal prepped mm -hmm. for, like, you know, when you can't predict your schedule because not eating the healthy food is just not an option. So yeah. you have to have that. But then if I have some time, okay, I can whip up something, like, nice for that one meal. Yeah. yeah. In between the meal prep that's already in the fridge. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes even when I have food prepped, I'm like, oh, I, I have time. I should just prep this anyways because, you know I mean, I mean it, it adds up and then you end up going through it. And so, yeah, it's always a smart idea to do extra prep when you can. That's right. So what's our next myth over there? So the next myth is something fishy. Oh. So what does this <sighs> pertain to? Um, we know that wild-caught seafood is obviously better than Atlantic or farm-raised seafood, right? Right. Um, but what many grocers are basically doing is they're saying that farm-raised salmon is actually wild-caught. Mm -hmm. And they're technically, other than the actual look of the product that you're getting, you can't really tell. Right. You really don't know. Um, and then that's not, the, and that's not even the worst part. The other part of that is they're actually, uh, what they're saying is it's possible for the scallops uh, to actually be punched out of the bodies of whitefish. And or shark sold, tails. Or shark tails <gasps> and yeah. called scallops and, and be put at the same price. Yep. So what? Something fishy. Yep. It's because of, you know, international waters. Who's regulating that? Right. That's yeah. what we talk about. I, think I mean, we touched on that before. Yep. Scary. It's like who's out there really doing that? And then they were saying that at that same time, like if people are out and they are trying to regulate it, they're also being bribed. There's all kinds of things that are going on. When you're out at sea, there's no justice. <laughs> Yeah, and I know we like <laughs> we've definitely mentioned and talked about how like when they say like fresh seafood, like all fresh seafood is like it's frozen beforehand. Yeah, it has you know? to be. So yeah, exactly. it's just another part to the myth. So that's yeah. number two. As long as you freeze it one time, because a lot a lot of this is freeze it whole when they catch it in the big operations, ship it to a processor, thaw it out, fillet it, debone it, repackage it, freeze it, ship it to where what? it's going to get sold, thaw oh it out goodness. again, and by the time you get it, like. Nasty, How many times was it frozen? Yeah. yeah, it's because it's been <laughs> deteriorated so many times going from frozen to thought state. Wow. Yep. So that's number two. Number three, not so nice spices. I think, you know, that's kind of like a common, you know, like reference. Like people know, like if you're going to, it's the same thing with supplements, right? When you're going, if you're getting your spices or whatever from, and the I'm not going to say the name. The, of the quality of the, stores, of the right? spices, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. If, if they're The great value place? Yes, exactly. <laughs> the wonderful right? value. <laughs> Yes. Uh, you can get a lot of other things from there. But as far as like your food and, you know, your spices and things like that, I mean, 
you're not knowing if it's actually that spice that it's being called that or I mean, it's all just marketing, right? It has a certain color. And what they're saying is like, you know, you may think you're getting paprika, but you could be getting something else that a just mixture been of other dyed spices, and all kinds of different colors and stuff. like yeah, that. Yeah, That's scary, too. I think they like mention it as like in terms of like allergies or people who either know or don't know if they have an allergy to a specific spice. You exactly. know, you think you're getting one thing, but you're actually getting something totally different. So, you know paying for the quality you know they might be like 99 cent spices may not be the best thing right <laughs> so knowing where you know i mean they're coming from is super important it's a big problem with oils too oh i yeah, think that's, that's one on that's oh, one is that coming extra up? Yeah. virgin olive oil yeah, yeah that's a huge one yeah. the next one is watered down juice you guys ever had what i don't necessarily drink much juice so i, I wouldn't know um but that's what they're saying well I they guess. say like a lot of like concentrates are like i mean i won't go into like the brands but you can get like a lot of the frozen juices where it's like a, a syrup and then you just add water to it and you mix it up and it turns into a juice but mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have any like fruit juice actually in it right like real it's just sugar yeah. yeah exactly yeah and so this one is just basically you know talking about like pomegranate juice or any of these Didn't other they talk about juices? orange juice specifically yep yeah yep and the fact that it's i mean really the actual part of the orange is actually, I feel like it, that's what's better for you than the actual juice. The juice is yeah. sugar anyway. And then what they're doing is they're just adding water to that juice and you're getting a watered down filtered drink and you don't even know it. Mm -hmm. So protect yourself. Don't drink the juices at the, uh, the store. Yeah. Make sure you just get a fresh squeeze. Exactly. Yeah. Squeeze it yourself. Which we do have available at Harvey. <laughs> we have the juicer. I was going to say, we do not have fresh squeezed juice. juice but but we have the juicer. If you <laughs> want to do it serve. yourself, you definitely can. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. Oh, the <laughs> this is this next one, number five, the honey holdup. Oh, this was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when, when you're going and you're trying to buy honey and whatnot, 75% uh, of honey that's sold at the stores doesn't even contain pollen. Yep. Which means it's technically not considered honey. Right. Because it has to According have some to sort FDA. of. Yeah. The FDA says it does have to have some sort of pollen. Right. Luckily, in Virginia, there are a lot of places where you can get, like, homemade honey, and, like, you can get it from a farm or from a person where you can, you know, trust it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's maybe s another route you could go down versus just buying whatever's on the old grocery store shelf. Right. You, I mean, you don't know. The The next one, Justin, you're going to enjoy, because this is one you preach about, pumped up meat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, the saline solution, saline. price per pound, all that stuff. Wow. Yep. It's yeah. criminal. Yeah. That's that's number six is, you know what I mean? Basically, when you read the label on the packages, you're going to see that it says, like Justin always mentions, saline solutions, all this kind of stuff, and you're paying price per pound. Right. So they're upping it. I mean... So you're paying for them more weight to get the lower price per pound, but they just added water to it to make it heavier. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't really make and, any sense. And basically what they're doing is it, they're pumping it up so it makes it look like it's bigger. Mm -hmm. Right? I wish I could do that to my muscles. It seems <laughs> like you're getting more. <laughs> Pump them full of water and make... <laughs> yeah, what well, water should not be spilling out of the chicken breast when you're cooking it. Shouldn't. Yeah, exactly. Seafood too. Like yep. in the frozen cases, there's a reason why they sell that frozen because if they thaw it out for you, it loses half of its weight in water. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh I just want to take this time to mention um you know everybody that's watching, Jen, um you know, thanks for uh tuning in. Um we got Paula McGrath. Thanks for for tuning in. Hey Paula. Doreen McKean, thanks for tuning in. Lee Seifert, hey. Lori, she's always tuning in. She's one of our faithful thanks Heartland Lori watchers. <laughs> Steve, thanks for tuning in. Andrea. And comment, uh, comment if you like the new time. Yeah, yes. we just changed our time to 12 p.m., right? So Yeah, if you, if you like 9.30, put a vote in for 9.30. If you like 12, or propose your own time. Let's just get a little uh, polling of best time for the podcast. That's right. Yeah, do you prefer us at lunchtime or do you prefer us first thing in the morning? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, number seven is the one that we were talking about before. So it's uh, the label says Evo. Oh, no, oh because no. it's not necessarily really extra virgin olive oil. So it's labeled as Italian extra virgin olive oil that you think you're getting from Italy. Uh, you're very excited because that stuff is really great. It's really delicious. Then all of a sudden you find out it's cut with other oils. Right. So it's really not what it says it is. And you're paying a pretty big penny for it, right? You think it's getting imported and all this kind of stuff and the entire process of actually... They actually went through, like, legal proceedings, I think, with one of, like, the main manufacturers out of Italy. They had to do, like, you know, some a deep dive into what they were actually mm -hmm. doing, and then they found out that they were manufacturing the product incorrectly and uh, using different oils instead of extra virgin olive oil and then naming it incorrectly and selling it as such. So, yeah, it's crazy stuff. That's right. Yeah, you got to look for that first cold pressed... Yep. And on the back, 
Like, <laughs> it'll always say, it'll list like packed in Italy, product of five different countries. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're. Yeah. <laughs> Do your research. Just right. read the label. At least start there. Oh, everybody's saying they love and enjoy the lunchtime. So nice. they love the new time. So cool. Well, grab your lunch and join us every Thursday at 12 p.m. Zach says, What's up? Hey How's Zach. it going, Zach? The custom cut man. <laughs> Matt, we're going to have to come up with a name for you. So we have the Sultan of Sourcing, Justin. We have the Custom Cut Man, <laughs> Zach. <laughs> what? Any help? Mm. Have to think Did about they come one. up with those names for themselves? I, I believe so. I, I, I kind of like the beef barista. The beef barista. Kind of yes. Thing, you know, because I'm serving up the beef. <laughs> 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 Maybe we'll have to think about that one. Well, meathead Matt. Maybe something to do with cats. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Meatless Matt. More, more something to do with cats. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Cats. All right. <laughs> mm, right. I'm trying to think of <laughs> something that goes with cats, like you know, mangy. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's, like That's not a nice cat. Wow. What do you mean? I thought that was cool. I thought the Aristocats. There was one. He, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe cat, it's cat guy Matt. Cat guy Matt. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We're gonna work on it. We'll, we'll work, work on, on that. We'll one. work on, we'll work on it. <laughs> All right. So number eight, uh, eggs that aren't what they seem to be. I know Zach kind of mentioned it um, in one of his posts as well. Yeah. Um, but that kind of ties into that. Just talking about the diff- all the different prices for eggs and all the different labelings and cage free versus pasture raised versus this and that, brown eggs, white eggs. Mm-hmm. There's lots of different information out there. So and Matt, you say you're eating eggs pretty much every day. What kind of eggs are you getting? Uh, there's a couple brands that I really like. Uh, Vital Vital Farms is. I know you can get those. Moms, I believe, is one of the carriers that really has them, and that's one local to me. I don't have you know, like a, a Wegmans or a Whole Foods. So I'm not sure if they're in those stores. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. That's the one I typically try and find. They have a couple different grades that they use. Um, other than that, driving around, definitely picking up. If I see a sign that says eggs, you know, like I'm, I'm trying to, to drop in on that mm-hmm. and then see what they have. Um, the big thing to really dive deep into the eggs in the egg industry it leads back to corn and soybean and our entire U.S. agricultural system and yep. how that really has a a big force into what is fed the chickens and then what ends up coming out of the chickens for us to consume. Mm. Yeah, you are yeah. what you eat. Yeah, the the way you can really tell is by the color of the yolk. Mm. That's that's, that's the biggest thing. Um, it'll be so much more nutrient dense and vitamin rich uh, when it has a much fuller brighter yellowish color okay not necessarily like fluorescent yellow obviously but like (laughs) you can just tell it's just more just vibrant right yeah right definitely and i don't know if you guys have experienced this but when you're cooking you know i mean like uh real eggs as you know i'm gonna gonna call it the texture as well and this is something you can only you know i mean when you're when you're actually eating them that you kind of find out you can't really tell from the look of course what you're saying is like you can tell from just the look of it but then I think even from, you know, just the texture of the egg, I've noticed that, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a huge difference. Like regular eggs, so you don't even need to add any kind of like milk or cream or something to make them fluffy. They just are fluffy the way that they are. You know what I mean? It's a, that texture of it. They actually cook better. Right. Mm-hmm. You can tell in the actual cooking process. Right. Yeah. I've noticed too, I don't know if there's any reason for this, but the stuff I get from local farms, the, the shells crack so easy compared to commercial eggs right i don't know if it's because of the washing versus you know what you get from a farm you don't have to wash because they haven't or you don't have to refrigerate them yeah they can sit out right yeah Mm -hmm. if they haven't washed off that bacteria natural Mm -hmm. shell around Mm -hmm. the egg yeah and they don't even need to be refrigerated yeah right Right. regular eggs that you're getting from a farm or something like that yeah that's what you just said oh Sorry, I'm <laughs> in the comments right now. I'm looking at the comments. It. My apologies. Yeah, no, you uh, don't. They don't have to sit out because they have like that bacterial, right? Uh, whatever kind of covering coating. Perfect. Uh, so n- number nine after the eggs, produce psychology. Oh yeah. So the this color of sense. the produce, um, they ar- they arrange them in a certain way uh, to make them look a certain way. And um, they talked about how they put it all at the front so that you can like come in with your cart and feel really good about loading it up with like all the healthy produce. And then you're 40% more likely to put like crap and junk in it later on throughout your shopping experience. So exactly. Ah. So you splurge on other stuff in the actual aisles. Yeah. 
So I thought the psychi- the psychology behind that was pretty interesting. Yep. Which ties into number ten, which is giant carts. Have you guys yeah. ever noticed how big some of these carts have gotten? They, They're I just like I don't know. I don't have a picture of it, but they were showing like a cart from like the '60s, and then like one from today, and like it's it's a lot larger because they want you to fill it up with more stuff. Interesting. Yep. Yeah. More space. Um, but yeah, after the giant carts, um, number eleven is impulse buys, right? So those that last moment, right when you get to the counter, they have the candies, they have you know like uh, all kinds of different things that are right there. They're just supposed to kind of uh, catch your eye, and and before you go out, you make that impulse, like oh yeah, I am kind of hungry right a now. You know what I mean? I am dollar have a little buys and yeah. all those things. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. They get you those. They get you with those at all different places: gas stations, convenience Salty stores, snacks, kind of stuff, yeah. grocery stores. Absolutely. Number 12. I didn't even notice this, but when you go through the actual grocery store, you might be able to notice it now, but expensive eye level. So the prices of things at eye level are going to be more expensive than if you got to kind of reach down or reach over something. The prices that you're looking at are always more expensive. Yeah, they put the most expensive items like right on like eye height and then the cheaper items. So we're, you know, I mean, down below and up above. So you guys notice that? No, no. <laughs> Not really, right? There, There's a lot of strategy. Yeah. With how they set up the stores, like the resets. I don't know if that's in there, but yeah, that's uh, I mean, if you look at the revenue difference from after a reset, when people got to go relearn where everything is in the stores that mm-hmm. they shop at, I yeah. mean, they're in there longer. They're yep. going through more aisles. They're grabbing more stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's part of the reason why they put like eggs and milk at the back too, is because they want you to walk through all the aisles to get to the back to pick up those three things that you came for in the first place. So. It's all psychology around, you know, getting you to move through the store, making those impulse buys, the way that they make like all the packaging look and like the different terminology. And then, of course, how they like arrange it. So, yeah, not only the fact that it's, you know, eye level, but like they put like the end cap deals are like, you know, always like the cheapest stuff that the grocery stores make like the highest profit margins on is like Mm. soda, chips, like things that, you know, HPA. Yeah. The the health and beauty products like razors. Yep. Yep. Exactly. High margin items. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so the hidden essentials, that's kind of what you were talking about, Chan. That was the next one. was the hidden essentials. So, like, you go in there, like you said, mm-hmm. you're looking for one or two different things. And, of course, they're going to be in a certain part of the grocery store. So you got to look and, and just be kind of, uh, uh, what's the word? Not incentivized, but you're... <laughs> You know enticed. I mean? Enticed. That's the <laughs> yeah, word, right? You're enticed, enticed to kind of... By everything you see along yeah. the way. Right, right. That's the marketing. Um, of course, end cap enticements. That's what we talked about. Sneaky 10 for 10 deals, mm. right? So, uh, if you buy one of them, it's like two, $3, but if you buy 10 of them for $10, but you have to buy all 10, they'll yeah. each become a dollar. So this is a, a big myth. Like 10 for 10 actually means one is one. It doesn't mean you have to buy 10, right? Like two for five, you don't have to buy two to get the one at two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've tested this a million times. Interesting. It says two for five. I get one up to the register. I get the same discount off one. They just want you to buy two. Right. right. That's exactly what they want. They're, you don't have to like, buy oh ten yeah. to get ten for ten. It's right. one for one, two for two. <laughs> yep. And then people are like, oh, well, I guess I'll just get ten. And then you ended up buying three times the amount that you needed for no reason. Yeah, it's going to expire before you use it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's kind of what they want. They want to push that out there so that you're, you're the more that you're buying. Well, it's taking it off their shelves, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So watch out for those ten for ten deals. Just get what you need. Yeah. I mean, again, we get back to what we talk a lot about, uh, talk a lot about on the podcast is 50% of food is wasted, mm-hmm. right? So 10 for 10, whatever you're doing, like, if you don't need 10, don't get 10. <laughs> <laughs> Buy what uh, you need. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. Uh, pre-cut produce, mm. right? So the price of the actual, I mean, sometimes a lot of times what you're getting into is like just because something is cut. You're going to pay more than what a pound of Twice the, the whatever price. it was, right? Yeah. So yeah. Like the onions are sitting right there, 89 cents, but you're going to pay, you know, what, $4 for eight ounces of Which diced, sometimes which I actually... For I the convenience, I think that's why a lot of people do it is, the, you know, like a lot of the prep work is mm. dicing and cutting peppers, onions, garlic, that kind of thing, the stuff that's going to go along with your meal. So yep. I think people see that as like it's going to help them out, but you're also paying twice the amount for the same exact product. It's worse than that. <laughs> Which products do they use to make those pre-made things? Mm. Probably not the good ones. It's probably... Stuff that's going to go bad, right? Yeah. Take it off the shelf, dice it up, throw it in the case, get it sold, right? So it's old. Yep. Yeah. Same thing with expired meats, like all the pre-marinated stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do we preserve this thing longer that's about to go bad? Let's pre-marinate it and then repack it. Yeah. 
I was talking to a guy at, at one of the, the pop-ups that we had, and he was saying, you know, uh, he noticed one time when he bought a, a piece of meat that was on sale, took it home, and noticed that the, I think the sell by or enjoy by date had already passed, and was like, no wonder it was on sale. Now, you know what I mean? And <laughs> Now I bought something that... Now, w- what we talk about is like, you know, not being on a, on a specific timeline to have to cook your food. Now it's already, I mean, you... You have to cook it within a couple of days. If not, I mean, it's going to be bad. I mean, especially you think meat with like E. coli and bacteria. I mean, it's pretty dangerous to kind mm. of eat those kind of things. Well, yeah, and like vegetables can go bad, you know, pretty quickly same, too. Same so deal. You end up throwing that stuff away if you don't use it. So right. Yeah. So pre-cut produce. So if you can opt for just regular produce, cut it yourself. <laughs> uh, so layout swaps. We are we already mentioned this. Um, you know they'll switch the store up on you so that you know you're you're already in kind of your routine of yeah. going somewhere. To I think Justin, you said you kind of knew a little bit about you know how they rearrange the stores and stuff like that. Yeah, I actually <laughs> I worked in a grocery store <laughs> in high school for a few years, and yeah, I did all this stuff. Mm. So yeah, it was a uh, very eye opening to actually work in a in a grocery store. I mean, you would see things like. You know, when these tractor trailers roll up to the back of the store, they got like 24 pallets of products, right? So one will show up and it's, you know, uh, non-perishable stuff, you know, no urgency, right? Pallets of paper towels, laundry laundry detergent, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, when you unload a trailer in the back of one of these grocery stores, you have to take all the pallets off and you put them down the hallway in the back of the store, right? Mm. Well, what, what about when it's fresh product and it's 100 degrees in the middle of the summer, there's no air conditioning back there. Like we would have chicken and mm. beef and ice cream and stuff. Like, you, it takes a while to pull 24 pallets off a trailer and then get it all into a safe temperature case. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm. yikes! Mm. Fresh supply chains are scary stuff. Yep. Yeah. And like, no offense to my old self and people that do this for a living now, but like, I was a dumb high school kid, you know. I'm not thinking about the food safety when I'm pulling pallets off of a truck. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's so true. Interesting. Um, next one is the what I like to call the Disney effect, the in-your-face smells, right? When you're walking down Main Street in Disney all the time, they, <laughs> they pump that, like, sugar cone smell out of you <laughs> yeah. so that by the time you're, like, right there, you're like, I got to get one of these. It smells so good. I need one of these kind of things. Yeah. Same thing with, like, you know, other name um, stores and and. and shops they'll do the same thing they'll cook these uh, or have these fresh smells out at you so that when you're walking down the aisle you're hungry you're hungry <laughs> and even if you're not hungry it just smells so good that you're like i have to get some of that <laughs> i don't know if that's a bad thing though right sometimes you're kind of that might be a good thing depends on what it is not the sweets as long as you can control yourself <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> um the the next one is slowing soft music mm. i don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing. I don't know right? that I've noticed that. I guess maybe it's to keep you comfortable and you know to make sure that you know the longer that you're in the store probably the more you're going to buy. Or you're going to buy. I don't know. Has that ever happened to you guys? Have you ever been locked in a store? No. <laughs> 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 I'm in and out. Yeah. I Me have too. a plan. I have a list. <laughs> and the grocery store that I shop at I, is the opposite music. Did he? Oh, oh yeah. really? Oh yeah. <laughs> I seem to get like oldie classics. No, what kind of music are they playing at the grocery store you shop at, Matt? Um, I'm not gonna say like <laughs> more like pop, top okay. forty stuff. Oh, yeah, okay. like okay. yeah, with like lyrics and like all Greatest sorts of stuff, kids. like yeah. okay. singing and <laughs> yeah. oh wow, yeah. same. I'm waiting for the uh, the grocery stores to come out with the screamo music so that you you really go in and get out. <laughs> <laughs> now I will also say I I do wear my headphones when I go grocery shopping, so I'm kind of in my own zone too. So interesting. Um, that's, a, that's a good tip. Yeah, and so I get the music I want, mm-hmm. and then sometimes I do dance at the grocery store. And it's not like the dancing that you would potentially think, but it's I'm moving to the music. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nice. Stepping to the rhythm. Oh, yeah. So he, you're shopping in musical time. <laughs> yeah. I probably get some looks, you know, like. Uh, who cares? Yeah. I mean, it's fine. One, two, take the <laughs> <laughs> Right. They're like, what's this guy doing? (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. I'll look forward to that. Which grocery store do you shop at? (laughs) Oh, it's called Streets Market Cafe. (laughs) Nice. It's. uh, I don't know how many locations there are, but it's it's in Baltimore City. Okay. Nice. Very cool. Uh, Next one is ninety nine cent problems. So Jay Z said ninety nine. Never mind. 
really with that. <laughs> but 99 cent problems. There's they. I guess right here they're saying that basically uh, uh, prices that ended 99 they seem silly and they just make it easier to make something like 5.99. Why not just make it six dollars? But if you put it at 99 cents, it right. looks better. So well, they said too, like the human brain like doesn't see. I guess the first number it only sees like the second two numbers. Mm-hmm. So it's like I'm not sure exactly yeah. why or how that works, but yeah. The basically, what they're saying is that penny, the one cent, is the difference between a sale making a sale and or not. not a sale. Right. Wow. Yep. Uh, so not only are they doing the Disney effect with the smells, they're also doing the free samples. Mm-hmm. So you actually get to try these things, right? That's that's the other part of it. They're putting the samples out there for you to try, and I don't know if that's something that they're not telling you that you're doing because it's right in your face. It's like here, try this. You mm-hmm. can say no, right. right? But if you say yes and you try it, I think there's a higher percentage you're probably going to get it. It's like you feel a little guilty almost. It's like, oh, I, I know, tried it. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> sure, it's right I'll here. take one. Right, and they ask you, did you like it? And yeah. you feel like you don't want to be rude, so you say, yeah, it was great. <laughs> and they go, oh, great. Well, you want one? And then they like, basically hand Give it, it to you. you. Yeah, and you're just like, oh. Okay. <laughs> what do I do? Put with it this? away once you go down the next aisle. Yeah. <laughs> do they do that at grocery stores? I, I feel like that's more of a like a wholesale club. They like do it at like Costco. Costco and stuff. I've seen it a few times at like. Um, or they may use to. I don't know if they still do with all the. Yeah, I've seen COVID. it at Giant a yeah, couple times, but it hasn't it hasn't been for a while. Yeah, but yeah, and only with like specific products or like mm-hmm. stuff like that. I think it's like when they're like at, at the Giant that w- that we go to. It's sometimes when it's a new product, essentially that comes out, mm-hmm. they'll try to do that. But most of the time, we're like you. We're in and out. We're like <laughs> we know exactly where we're getting. It's most of the time it's paper products and things like that. Or it's just like being delivered. Right. <laughs> well, now, yeah, especially with Instagram and stuff. Yeah. They do with alcohol a lot at uh. Oh yeah, cedar. wines and things like that, yeah. And it's like, you, you can't not walk past them, too. Yeah. They're like, oh, would you like to try it? I'm like, it's 10 a.m. I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I'm working today. Come it's on. 5 o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No judging. <laughs> uh, so the next one, I didn't really think it was that bad, but low-cal pints aren't actually ice cream. So they have the, the picture of, like, Halo Top and, and things like that that aren't actual ice cream, um, but they're selling it as, like, low-carb. But I think... If you're low carb and you're looking for Halo well, Top, I think it's I technically think really not ice cream because it's like technically not a dairy product. True. But people just True. call it ice cream. They classify it as ice cream, but technically it's made with, you know, I mean, almond milk or coconut milk or something else that's not technically dairy. So I think that's where like that confusion kind of comes in. Is that it's not really actually ice cream. It's like a it's a frozen dessert. Yeah. And I think right now it's a nice I don't cream. know if it's right now, but I, I was reading somewhere that I think the dairy um, industry is actually upset at that, that things like almond milk and coconut milk and those kind of things, because they don't necessarily come from a cow. Mm-hmm. They're kind of upset about it. They're like, hey, you can't use the word milk. Mm-hmm. So what would you what would you say? Almond water? <laughs> like, sure. You know, I mean, it doesn't seem appealing. It doesn't. You know what I mean? When you're thinking about going through the <clears throat> grocery store, it doesn't seem like something you would get. Now that you say that, I think uh, I want to say it was Texas, but I think the state said something about. Beyond meat, like they, there were products that weren't actual meat, couldn't put meat on their labels. Oh, right. yeah. oh interesting. Yeah, makes sense. Makes yeah. sense. Mm. It's called Beyond Plants and Chemicals. But then again, Texas <laughs> is a huge uh, beef raising That's industry. True. <laughs> exactly. So. You're right. That's true as well. You know the dairy industry, while we're on that topic? I was just going to, yeah. It's so crazy. The billions and billions of do- taxpayer money that's spent on subsidizing that industry because dairy consumption is going down rapidly. Yep, because people of are waking up. Subsidies. Yeah, mm-hmm. yep. so they literally have because they get the subsidies, they still overproduce what we need, and they just throw it into storage. Mm. It's like billions of dollars of dairy sitting in storage wow. that's never going to get used, and the taxpayer dollars keep flowing in in the form of subsidies. It's horrible. That drives me nuts. Yeah. Uh, so on on that same topic, um, they basically tempt you into buying fake cheese, right? So I think um, questionable cheese, cheeses, kind of like Kraft Singles, Cheese Whiz, Velveeta, they look like real cheese, but they aren't real cheese. They're, you know, I mean, most of us know they're processed and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but the FDA requires these products to basically be labeled as pasture processed cheese spread or as uh, pasture processed products um, because they're not real, because they're they're... Um, is that pasteurized? pasteurized? Pasteurized, yeah, sorry. Oh, yeah. Not pasture raised, sorry. Pasteurized. pasteurized. Yeah. I was like, okay, that makes it's sense. It's not confusing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pasteurized, yeah. Um, because they're made with uh, old cheese scraps most of the time. Oh. Yeah. Yep. So those single slices of cheese, watch out. Uh, the <laughs> other one, this is kind of the same. 
um, your whipped cream, like your Cool Whip, those kind of things. Mm-hmm. It's not really whipped cream. Right. It's not really. Yeah. It's made with different ingredients. But you have a nice recipe, right? I mean, we, we do homemade whipped cream all the time. Yeah. As long as you have like a cold stainless steel bowl and you have like, you know, like an immersion blender or something, you can do heavy whipping cream and add like a little bit of vanilla extract to it. No sugar. And you can have whipped cream and we do it with like berries and stuff as like a dessert. But yeah, yeah. it tastes great and doesn't have like sugar and additives or you know and stuff that you can so you can spray it out of an aerosol can or whatever so yeah right yeah it's good stuff oh this is funny are they actually selling the creme de la creme so oreos the actual cream quote unquote that's inside mm-hmm. is not if you look on the packaging is not labeled as cream it's labeled as creme and i think <laughs> it's because they actually don't have uh oh, the right to say it's cream right <laughs> what do yep. you think? That's crazy. When you look hi- at the nutrition <laughs> facts of an Oreo, <laughs> I have literally tried, like, how can you pack that many calories into something so small? How is it possible? <laughs> it's yeah. like... Lots and lots of sugar and hydrogenated oils and all kinds of stuff. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's mind-blowing. It is. Yeah. It's it crazy. Is. So. And what I guess ends up happening is you th- you wouldn't think that, so you'd be like, oh, I can eat more. Because they're so small. Mm-hmm. Mm. Like a whole plate of rice and chicken and green beans is like one Oreo. Or, yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then now they make the Oreos as like a thin now, so you can feel even better about eating 20 oh, of them. Diet Oreos. Thin. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Of course. Right. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> we've already talked about this one. They label non-milk items incorrectly. Um, oh, this is a good one. So they sold you wood pulp. So what? Uh, basically, if you've ever notice like i guess cellulose listed on the ingredients um cellulose uh is a, is a used filler that prevents the parmesan from clumping up okay and cellulose mm-hmm. is just uh uh basically leftover wood pulp so it, i know that i've seen it in a lot of like seasonings and things because it prevents like caking i believe anti-caking mm-hmm. agents yes yeah. exactly yeah mm-hmm. yep but it's one of those uh you know fillers or whatnot that is i mean it's okay to consume i guess quote unquote because it's not gonna i mean i really i don't know (laughs) when you think about it i was gonna say it's not gonna kill you but how do you know yeah i mean they're like oh you can eat it but it's what are the long-term effects of consuming wood like i don't know if that's in our healthy diet but you ever chopped up wood and eaten some sawdust (laughs) i don't can't say that i have yeah i say that i have but yeah it's filler (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's crazy it's in a lot of stuff too Yep. Like a lot of pre-prepared foods, um, definitely a lot of like seasonings, marinades, things like that. Yep. Uh, things that you shake a lot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, careful out there. Be on the lookout for that. BHA and BHT, those are anti-kicking agents too, I believe. Mm-hmm. Okay. Interesting. I don't know. Uh, this is a good one. So they market fish as crab meat. So, in your California roll, mm-hmm. it's not really crab. crab. Right. I think everybody kind of knows that, but it's imitation crab, but they still label it as crab. And then at the same time, they label it as crab or they're just using some sort of white fish, leftover white fish mm-hmm. and they're in diet and then they're able to call it California roll or whatever. So <laughs> that was one of the ones that's here too. Is there any meat glue on the list? Uh, meat glue. There, there, uh, one of them was, I, I remember reading through it like, cause there's like a whole, there's more than things, 40. So. The, <laughs> the meat glue definitely was, was one of them. Um, I don't have it here, but oh, I think actually here, fake filet mignon. Yep. Right. So, a lot of the prices that you're paying, I mean, quote unquote, it says it's filet, it says it's this, and it's something totally different, and uh, it says be been formed from pieces of whole muscle meat, or it's been reformed from a single cut. <laughs> so. Yep. Take wow. Take the byproducts and glue them together, together, and hey, here's a filet min fake. Right. <laughs> and you think it's like you know the intermuscular fat or whatever, and it's really just different pieces being mm. put together. So crazy. Yeah. Wow. Maple syrup. Uh, so it's really corn syrup. Oh. It's not really maple. So it's horrible. Yeah, it kind of goes along with the other, the honey. other things. That are th- yeah, the honey and all those kind of things that they're labeling it as, and it's not really that. Uh, whole wheat bread. So this is one I had, I had no idea about, so. Many bread uh, loaves state that they're whole grain to entice you into buying seemingly healthier um, and usually pricier item, uh, pricier. Uh, however, unless the product lists 100% whole grain in the ingredient list, then it's probably best not to pick it uh, to help you streamline the bread aisle. 
you can you know kind of do your research, read the labels essentially because most of these things are being uh, you know kind of put together. They're not really what they seem to be unless it really says it. And then even if it really says it, can you really trust it? Right. That's part of it. Yeah, even if it really is, do you really want to consume wheat anyways? No. <laughs> Once no. you know the effects. Right. They display organic produce first, um, you know. So the organic stuff is is at the front because obviously it's more expensive. Um, but if that's what you're looking for, I guess like for us, like if you're looking for organic apples or organic blueberries, it's just easier. We're in and out. Thank you. They actually help <laughs> us out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but definitely. yep, that's that's one thing. Uh, and then of course we talk about this on the podcast. Fish oil pills are always on sale uh, because most of the time they're not really the quality that you think they are or they're not doing what you think they'd be doing in your body for your body um old and expired right right Fish, matt i know you burps. you have some experience with supplements and things like that right yes i do any uh tips you care to give supplements should always be in addition to already eating a nutritious and nutrient dense diet they should never be meant to make up for Right, like it's the same way I feel about pizza and other quote unquote unhealthy foods. Um, I love pizza, I will eat pizza, mm-hmm. but I tend to add it on to an already great foundation of food consumption and nutrient rich foods. Mm-hmm. So you're almost kind of mitigating the effects of it. Mm. So true, yeah. Um, earn the right for that food. Right. Um, But when it comes to supplements, I think the big, big, uh, I'd say top three that you should really probably just have no matter what are going to be magnesium, Mm. um, vitamin D3 specifically um, in conjunction with K. So they just work better together when you uh, absorb them that way. And mm, probably just those two would probably be the, the, the ones that you should try and get in because you can they're just crucial for a lot of cellular activity Mm -hmm. and they are actually all electrolytes so Mm -hmm. which is a lot of things people are deficient in yeah Yeah. um, because of the diets that we tend to have yeah Um, so yeah magnesium and vitamin d and with k k is the uh the electrolyte in that Mm -hmm. Um, then we've already kind of been speaking about this one. They hide dairy, um, and meat behind junk food. So, you know, you go in there to get your dairy and your meat. Um, you know, that's on your list. And of course they're going to put you through a bunch of junk food aisles to kind of, you know, you got the kids with you or even yourself. You know what I mean? Like I was there at one point where it was just like, Hey, I see a bag of chips. I see the kettle, uh, cooked chips, the salt and vinegar ones that you can dip into the cheek. No, I'm just stop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was living in my past life. But, yeah, and y- they send you through these aisles so that by the time you get to where you really want to get to, you've got your cart filled up with a whole bunch of things you didn't, you never knew that you wanted. So um, <laughs> they put flowers up front. I think that's nice, though. I kind of enjoy the flowers up front. <laughs> um, but when you walk into some of these grocery stores, the first thing you're going to see, um, other than the produce, is the flowers. They give shoppers an impression that the flowers and the rest of the items in the store are freshly picked. <laughs> my goodness. That's some that's some psychology. Like somebody really had to think about this. Like make sure we yeah. put the flowers up front so that you know everything everything's freshly picked. Yeah, it's a large industry. Yep. Just so much blind allegiance out there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Start asking more questions. Absolutely. Definitely. We had Matt um, Mayer on the podcast, and that was one thing he he referenced. It's like without the actual individual consumer renegades, you know, like the uh, the the farms and the people that are doing the right things, they can't get out there. So we got to make sure. You know, that we're doing our parts as consumers. When we're out, we're asking the right questions. We are, um, you know, making sure that, that we're making the right decisions when we're choosing the right products. Right. And, and those supporting kind of those, and you know, the people that are doing, doing the right, right thing. Absolutely. Yep. Definitely. Yep. Uh, and the last one, they make you enter through a one-way door. Only one way. One way in, in one way out. Right. Hmm. So I guess it's kind of like uh, streamlining you, like w- we're... we're Dictating the way. Funneling you in one way and right. funneling you out the other way. Just like cattle. <laughs> right. I was thinking that too, right? Oh, wow. Yeah. So, a lot of things you should be aware of. Good stuff. Wow, my eyes are open. 
I don't know about you guys. I mean, yeah. I already knew the grocery store could can be a dangerous place, but uh, yeah, dangerous. <laughs> I mean, in terms of like you know the education live? behind like the labeling and right. like not reading into ingredients labels or like thinking that you're getting a quality product that you know you're actually not or you know, thinking that you're providing something healthy to your body and it's really not healthy. And all it takes is just, like, the research and looking into, you know, what are the right products and what are the right ingredients and what are the things I want to put in my body and what are the things that I don't. So. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so David Anderson just put, uh, is Blind Allegiance the same as being a Caps fan? Oh, man, he's been giving me such a hard time lately. (laughs) Two overtimes last night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a hard loss. Yeah, congratulations on all the Stanley Cups. Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> couldn't share any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Well, I think uh, this was a very informational topic. If you enjoyed the topic for today, please give us a like or let us know in the comment section below. If you have any topics which you want us to cover, make sure to send those in the comment section as well, or you can send us a message or an email. We definitely love to cover those. Uh, thank you, everyone who has tuned in. Um, and from the winners today, we will have someone who will win our Rufus Tea giveaway. We will send you a message and get that out to you as soon as possible. Oh, for the participants. Mm-hmm. You said the winners, sorry. Yeah, for, for the, the participants. participants. Yes, for everyone who is viewing today, who commented, liked, uh, or shared the podcast, should be entered in to win. Yep. And with that. Oh, well, Matt, before we uh, before we get sent off, anything. How much time do we have? We have as much time you as you'd like. Well, I thought it would be uh, after getting through this entire list. And full disclosure, I had no idea what we were going to be talking about today <laughs> on the podcast. Uh, I think it'd be interesting <laughs> to talk about things that we're surprised aren't on the list. Ooh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and or just overall ways to navigate the grocery store for those who want to get in and get out and make the best of it. Right? Absolutely. Don't fall into the traps. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let it rip. Uh, well, um, things that I'm kind of surprised about is the seasonality of produce. Right, if we're talking specifically buying the stuff fresh, um, all of these, the majority of these things are flown in from all around the world. Yep. Mm-hmm. So for us to be able to eat bananas 24-7 every single day of the year, anywhere you go, 7-Eleven, any grocery store, any convenience store has bananas available. It's like that type of stuff, what it's turned into changing the way that our bodies work. And there's a lot of different thoughts on, you know, when should you eat fruit? Right. Should you eat it? Should you only eat it in season? Right. What happens if you, what happens to your body if you continually give it to it? And when it doesn't think things like that, like mm-hmm. summer, summer fruits and summer vegetables versus winter fruits and vegetables, like all sorts of stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's a lot of interesting science and, and literature out there about it. But also at the end of the day is like, would you be better off eating that than something that comes then out of a box there or is. a bag? Right. Like, mm-hmm. so there's, you know, there's toss ups. Yeah. 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 I always think that's, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Like we, we are, I feel like as human beings, we are seasonal, right? Like where we sh- do enjoy different things in different seasons. Um, and, and I think like, you know, those certain climates where there isn't those seasons, uh, you know, it's a lot, it's a little bit easier because you can enjoy, you know what I mean? Fruits and, and, you know, those lighter fair foods in a, in a warmer climate year round. Whereas when we come into, you know, like, like, especially here in the mid Atlantic where we have every single season, uh, you know, and, and you look at the land, different things grow at, at different times. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very, it's very interesting to kind of think about because you're right. Like, should we really be eating bananas in the fall when they're not necessarily being grown? Um, but what's the alternative, right? Um, and a banana, like you said, is a lot better than, you know what I mean? Something else process. Process. So, yeah. So the, here, here's what I compare it to, right? Cause you have people who are in good shape and look good, take care of their health. They cycle nutrients and manage it themselves. Mm-hmm. Now that we have endless summer, which is what the concept is, right? Because we can mi- migrate the seasons, move the food all over the world and supply chains. Mm-hmm. That discipline is no longer built in. Because when you consume heavy sugar products that are available in the summer, all year round, you're telling your body, "Hey, winter's coming. Let's store on some fat." And it converts all that sugar to fat storage, and then all winter, when that stuff's not available, mm-hmm. you lose all that weight. And that's how humans cycled for, you know, millions of years. Yeah. So now that we have endless summer, it's up to you to discipline 
that intake and make that make those right decisions. Wow, absolutely. Yeah, that's crazy. And I guess one thing that I noticed, um, I guess just because a few years back, you know, we did keto, mm-hmm. um, and just like the minuscule amount of like products. Now I'll say there are a lot more paleo like keto products that are going to be low carb things made with better ingredients. You know. Um, that stuff's more like prominent and you can find it more often, but still in an aisle with 500 different kinds of granola, you know, I mean, why are only three of them paleo or keto or, you know what I mean? Like a healthier option. So for me, it's just, you know, when where there'll be more of these, you know, healthier, better quality mm. products available in these stores versus them, them being such a small amount compared to everything else. I feel like that's a slippery slope though, right? Because I think a lot of times that turns into marketing. So then they just start putting paleo and they just start putting keto and all these items. And you're just like, oh, yeah, uh, like I'm it's keto. Good for I'll me. just go ahead and buy yeah, it. Yeah, just because it has the label like that doesn't mean that it's necessarily good for you. But what I think you'll start to see with that is direct to consumer. Yeah. Right? So you can see a lot of those products, um, you know, direct from, you know, the company. Like you go to their website and they ship it to you direct. Like they yeah. don't want to fool around with the grocery stores. That makes yeah. sense. Because the all of the economics that go into being involved in a grocery store, like mm, that's true. I didn't you know, like the supply and, um, you know, if they're going to have it regionally or across the country and right. then like, there's a whole bunch of other things I can get into that. So buying Jeez. direct from, you know, the company. Right. Wow. And that do you think that kind of changes the landscape of grocery shopping? Like as we move into, you know, after post COVID and those kind of things, do you think that, you know, people not wanting to go to the grocery stores now are going to do more of that direct, to consumer sort of sales process? Like they're not going to really need to go into these grocery stores? Do you think you guys see that changing? I think the entire world is going direct to consumer mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Mm-hmm. How, and to in our lifetime, how far into it we are and we see it, I'm not sure. But, you know, there's companies out there that are going to be growing food synthetically in, in laboratories and stuff like that. Like, wow. mm, this isn't... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're running, I shouldn't, we're running out of space on the earth, but <laughs> how we utilize the surface on the earth is changing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how for, for us to be able to, as a entire civilization, feed the people properly mm-hmm. through proper growing mm-hmm. and cultivation and agriculture um, and animal raising yep. is, I don't, I, and I could be wrong, but I don't think it's possible for the amount of population that we have and growing mm. what about you justin do you see it changing do you see it staying the same um i think it's a very slow process because it's just not enough people that do the seeking right mm-hmm. um that's where it starts you're not gonna vote with your dollars until you have an education component that makes you act a certain way right like if i don't know any better i mean how many i can't like how many years did i just go buy lucky charms because i like them <laughs> Right. I mean, that's as far as people think it. If you don't start down on the journey of learning, okay, well, what's in the Lucky Charms? Mm. What's Mm -hmm. its what's its footprint on the environment and blah, blah, blah. Like there's a million a million things you can go into to where you find your integrity barometer and then you start to vote with your dollars. Mm. Like there are certain products. I don't care. There's a double the price. Like more people need to pick the more expensive one and then the other one will fade away. Like the grocery stores are going to carry what's in demand. All companies carry what's in demand. That's right. Yeah. Right? Yep. Make sure we're asking for those things and asking the right questions. Yeah. They say, too, like, you know, you don't know kind of the impact that you have. If they have over, I think it was like seven people, like, ask for one thing in a supermarket, that they will actually make, like, an initiative to try to, like, find or seek that product or something similar. So, mm. I mean, you know, you speaking up can have, uh, can make a difference, yeah. can have an impact. I kind of see it, you know, the same way, um, you know, that, that Matt does kind of is, is I think people are going more direct to consumer. I think across the board, not even just in their grocery items. I think in, in, in most things that they're getting nowadays, mm-hmm. most things that we're consuming, they want to go to the company and kind of find out, mm-hmm. um, you know, who this company is, what they're doing. Um, and I feel like we fit in with that because that's what we do. We go, you know, right to the families. You can come right to us. You can ask us any questions. All of our stuff is online. Yep. You, we have a YouTube. You can go to the YouTube channel. You can do your research. There's so many different things um, that you can actually search about out about Heartland Foods. Yeah, and um, the, the value is there because we, you know, are providing the education right. and the explaining, you know, what are the processes, you know, what, what are the farms actually doing, you know, mm-hmm. and who, who and what 
you know, are these are these people that are, you know, making the food that you're going to eat and your family's going to consume. So yeah. I think that adds a peace of mind. Yeah, because I think the line is so blurred that the longer it goes, the more people are just going to be, you know, turned off to, you know, the, the dyes and all the extra stuff. Like as right. we start to learn more about, you know, how food is affecting our bodies, mm-hmm. I think the more and more people that just become educated on those things, the more questions they ask, the more people become in tune, the, the larger the community grows. Mm-hmm you're going to have to feed it, right? You're going to, uh, for a lack of a better word, right? You're going to have <laughs> to feed this community that is asking these questions that wants these things. Yeah. So it's like, uh, you see the picture I posted of the beach in the seventies. Yes. Yeah. That was blue not mind. one fat body. Uh, that, not was like, one. that was like the craziest thing. I was like, wow. So I like, how do we go to a society? You know, mm-hmm. what is that? 40 years later now, yeah. 30, 40, 50 years 50. later. It's not that long. And now like the beach is literally, I mean, I don't want to use, I don't know what term to use, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it would be <laughs> like if you same. were in the seventies, you, you would feel like you were in on another planet Yeah. Mm-hmm. when you look around and look at how bad this problem is. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot more involved than just food on that one. Mm. I mean, yeah. the way our society is like the jobs we do, the routines we have, the schedules we keep, mm. you know, the everything that we do. Yeah. Mental, yeah. physical, all those different things. And the, well. the culture of okay, this isn't a problem until it is, and then we'll just use pharmaceuticals. To right, we'll just a quick fix, oh right? The magic pill. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because eating proper nutrition is very important, but there are so many other factors in our lives that we need to keep up on. Right. Yeah. The overall wellness. Yeah. Yep. It, all, it all counts, right? It's yep. just kind of like the, the total toxic load. Like, mm-hmm. if you're breathing in garbage air, but you're eating healthy, like, yep. eh, you got one third of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, your water's all contaminated, yeah. but uh, you're eating healthy food. Yeah, yeah. it all matters, right? Mm-hmm. Mental health, physical health. That's why that we stuff. focus on convenience, right? Because if it doesn't fit in a lifestyle, no one's going to change. So it has to be like the healthy stuff has to also be convenient. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. And a lot of times I feel like that's what happens is it's not, or people don't know that it's there. And, and that's the biggest opportunity for most of these things is obscurity, like getting out of obscurity, like, organic food and what they're really using in those kind of things is is very important yeah. because the more we can be make it become mainstream and and out in your face and transparent the better i think we all are yeah yeah so. and it comes back to like the reason why people buy things like i don't know i wish everybody shopped with us because of the health and all that stuff but yeah. we made it really convenient the yep. fast thaw times, you're not throwing any food away, like yep. all these things. Like that's actually the bigger, bigger motivator. Yeah. Same thing with the whole house water system. Mm-hmm. It's really not the chemicals and stuff for most people. It's, oh, I can get up in the middle of the night and go to my, the faucet and get water right. out of my bathroom or like my hair, skin and nails can be all pretty in the shower. Like all that stuff's <laughs> great. But like, what about removing like all the cancerous chemicals that are in your water? Yeah. Right. That you're drinking, bathing in, washing your dishes. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what are the, the long-term effects from that? Right. Right. Like, that's the one thing we, we can't really, you know, like, identify or whatnot. But, like, time will tell, you know, using, you know, like, the water systems and, and, and eating this way and those kind of things, the future-wise. Because, Longevity. you know, if, you, if yeah. you think about, you know, in the 80s, the 90s, where we didn't really have this idea of really, like, what people were eating and the right way to eat and, you know, all these kind of things. And we're still answering those questions. There wasn't really a lot known. Now they're, they're diving into the, you know, the research on the cattle and, and what they're eating and how their saliva kind of affects like the grass and that kind of stuff. So yep. there's, I've, I'm intrigued by the fact that there's going to be so much more information that we should come out with, you know, as time kind of goes on, um, as far as, you know, eating right and, and the longevity aspect of it. Cause so I feel like that's one learn. thing that's missing. Yeah. There's so much to learn. It's this, you know, this interesting give and take where it's like nature was created perfectly in itself. Like, though you just mentioned the way the cow's saliva, like, changes, and they know which grass to eat, mm-hmm. yep. right? They skip the ones that they're, they're not supposed to eat or the ones that are kind of produce, you right. know? But at the same point, we need science to move forward and advance things as well, but it's like mm-hmm. they kind of cross over. Yeah. So it's kind of like you need both, but you don't want science to bleed into, like, the way my cow eats. Right. Yeah. But you can't help it. <laughs> at a certain it, point, it, right? Yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. That's the mic. Mic drop. Yeah. Right. <laughs> uh, <Bob. laughs> yeah. Awesome. It's all great stuff. Well, I have enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much, Matt, for joining us on the podcast today. It's been a pleasure to have you. Uh, we will be back next Thursday, 12 p.m., so look out for that. 
Um, with that, Justin, I think you can go ahead and send us off. All right, everybody. That was a long one. Thanks for joining us. If you stuck with it the whole time, I think you should win the prize, but that's yeah. not how it works. So we're going to do the, <laughs> we're do the draw and someone's going to win the giveaway today. And we'll be back next week. As always, stay healthy with Heartland. Oh, <laughs>